This is Marketing Jam, a show featuring the brightest minds in marketing. Brought to you by Canada Post. Head to canadapost.ca forward slash insight podcast for ideas to add value to your marketing. Thanks everyone for joining us this week on Marketing Jam. I am very excited to talk about a topic that a lot of people are talking about. I'm going to learn some stuff uh, this week. Hopefully you learn some stuff. Um, So Joe, let's jump right in. Um, Tell us about uh, yourself and the company you run. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Um, I love your shirt and your mug. Thank you. Thank you. Um, No, I uh, founded Viral Nation um, about six years ago. Um, I am not a marketer um, from my previous endeavors, uh, just a kind of a serial entrepreneur. really kind of got in tune with the influencer space early. Uh, Viral Nation um, was kind of like an idea to monetize um, athletes and celebrities, social medias. Um, This was, you know, seven years ago. Before that was a cool thing to do. Um, And, you know, quickly kind of got into representing influencers. That's where we got our start was we were just like Brad Pitt would have an agent. We were representing uh, social celebrities. Um, And then we were getting kind of contacted by agencies all around the world for influencer campaigns and brands, and we were kind of the middleman. So we were the talent guys. Um, And then after that first year, we decided to launch our own marketing firm, and that was our first big break point. Um, Just the timing was just so great for us, and and our our knowledge in the space was profound just because of how many deals we did for so many different people. Um, Took that, ran with it. Uh, company started to scale in like light speed. It was it was insane how fast we were growing. Um, and then over the last few years, we've added a number of elements. We've become a full service marketing agency. Obviously, uh, hinged on influencer. We're the biggest mm-hmm. in the world when it comes to influencer itself. But we have a performance marketing team, digital team, strategy team, content team, experiential team. Uh-huh. Uh, Viral Nation is just over a hundred people. Um, Canadian company. We but we do. Um, we're, we're a bunch of Canadian guys, but we do most of our business internationally. Um, we only do 5 to 10% of our revenue in Canada. The rest is all in the U.S., China, and Europe. Um, and we've specialized in, in a number of things, man. Um, in the influencer space, uh, we run campaigns from celebrity level, uh, big, big, big you know, YouTubers and stuff like that, all the way down to like Victoria's Secrets, like ambassador campaign and micro-influencers and stuff like that. And we're super platform agnostic. So because of our size, we're able to do everything from like, you know, big game releases. We represent all of Activision Blizzard all the way to Match.com and Crayola. And like, so we don't really have like a a niche like a lot of influencer marketing companies have. But that's our general overview. So there's a lot of people talking about influencer marketing. A lot of people know about it now. There's a few questions I have specifically. Is there such a thing as B2B influencer marketing yet? Yeah, so uh, funny you say that. Uh, in in um, early November of last year, December, uh, we started to build the influencer, the B two B influencer marketing part of our business. Uh, we launched it in February of this year, right before this cataclysmic meltdown of the universe. Um, but yeah, we we've been working on it really hard. B two B influencer marketing is not what you think it is, and I think a lot of what people are doing is the wrong approach. Um, you know, when you look at the B2C side of influencer marketing, there's an abundance of, of opportunity to work with these people and whatever. In the B2B space, generally what we find is that the large, call them influencers in B2B, are either successful business uh, people yeah. um, who make significant incomes and you're not going to be able to pay them per, to promote your brand, which yeah. which poses an issue. Second is they're, you, the, the, the biggest group besides them is going to be um, agents, uh, sorry, not agency. Uh, industry analysts um, mm-hmm. and press and those guys you can't pay to promote your product and stuff like that. So it, it leaves a small pool. So what we've done is we've looked at it a little bit differently. Um, and I think that's why we've been so successful. Uh, we we represent, I can't say some of them, but we represent some of the biggest B2B kind of brands um, in the world now. We have close to seven of them onboarded um, as, like, as part of our launch, which mm-hmm. is really, really special for us to have their uh, you know, stamp of approval. But we're more looking at how do we create internal influencers for them by utilizing LinkedIn? How do we, um, you know, create data around LinkedIn? Um, something I didn't mention earlier was uh, Viral Nation um, 
our other co-founder, who's my partner, um, he's worked for the last year and a half developing tech. And that tech has um, every social platform's API licensed into it. And it's like the holy grail of like influencer tech. Uh, so we've utilized that on the B2B side and made modifications so that we can find, you know, where are these conversations taking place on LinkedIn? Who are the people that are influencing these decisions? So we're using a lot of data. We're, we're finding ways to create influencers within organizations, getting them to do stuff like we're doing right now, right? There's, they, they just don't ever make video content. They don't ever, you know, and then on top of that, using digital in a smarter way. So a lot of these mm -hmm. larger B2B corporations, they rely on a lot of old school tactics. I think, and, and I'll be honest, B2B marketing is, you know, five to 10 years behind B2C always, right? So I get into these conversations about, you know, sponsoring conferences and, uh, you know, developing these very mundane marketing materials and the videos they're putting out, you know, you want to jump off a bridge when you watch them. They're, they're bad, right? So like it's introducing the really cool new aspects of digital and social from B2C to them and making their content consumable and then doing everything we can on the mm -hmm. on influencer side to tie it all together. Yeah, I've seen it with like like an Amber Mac who's in Ontario, um, you know, is a, is a speaker, uh, but I often see her promoting certain products, whether it's Nintendo or certain B2B products. And, and I find that so fascinating because she's such a great spokesperson for these products. Right. And but has that reach. But at the same time, what's interesting is... Um, people don't really understand the full landscape of B2B, right? So there's B2B for SMBs, right? That's like HP printers. Mm -hmm. So you look at influencers on Instagram and YouTube, and some of them might have a high propensity of like entrepreneurs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So tapping into them on those channels is cool. Um, you know, like everyone uses QuickBooks or whatever. So there's a small pool of B2B companies that have a huge audience of small, medium businesses because there's millions yeah. of small, medium yeah. businesses. But what's the solution for, you know, the industrial engineering firm? What's the yeah, solution yeah. for the guys who create software that helps centralize banking systems? What's mm -hmm. like B2B is much bigger than the yeah. consumer B2B style company. So we've kind of figured out how to do it for all of them. Those ones are easier. It's just mm -hmm. like an extension of B2C. Um, yeah. But it, it gets complicated as you're, audience size starts to shrink yeah no it makes sense yeah like rogers and shaw both i've been involved with both where they host these like business resource centers or workshops or webinars and it's their way to get you know the small business owner you know one over right yeah and they like awards right ernst and young does their awards and mm -hmm. they're, yeah there's lots of innovative really cool ways that they're doing stuff it's just they haven't figured out that you know i did a i did a webinar this morning just about attribution and stuff on influencer marketing short sure, was fun you know close to 100 marketers watch that right mm -hmm. and like you, they don't do that type of stuff you know what i'm you know what i'm saying so it's sometimes yeah. it's just educating them and getting them to like the digital frontier and then once you're there showing them how powerful lead generation can be and all that type of stuff that's awesome and, and speaking of attribution that's my next question is with, with tiktok and instagram and all these uh, channels that are out there uh, what are you giving and what kind of reports are you providing your clients when it comes to influencer attribution for conversions? So there's a number of ways. Um, I'd say we're probably the most advanced. We've worked with um, everyone from Nielsen's to all these different guys. Like when Viral Nation kind of, so influencer marketing when it started, right, it was, you know, I have a 20K test budget or, yeah. you know, we want to do this one-off holiday campaign and like the stakes weren't high enough for them to worry about attribution as much as they do when they start to scale. Yeah. So Viral Nation now has clients that, uh, you know, influencer marketing is a major pillar of their marketing strategy. And it could be, you know, we have clients that spend $5 million a year, yeah. like it's becoming a bigger thing, right? So in order for us to get to where we've gotten with these guys, we've had to really pull up our socks and figure out this attribution thing. So we do it in every way possible. We work with almost every third party CRM and 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 payment, tra uh, sorry, and conversion tracking partner. So a lot of these guys will have Amazon as their, you know, they sell on Amazon or they'll have, you know, HubSpot or Salesforce built in or they'll have a Shopify or, yeah. you know, so we figured out how to integrate our links and our, and, and Influsoft, which we use into those third parties. So when we run influencer campaigns, we can track as much as possible from the tangible oh. click throughs, right? Where it gets sticky and why I did that whole webinar this morning was the psychology of the social platforms is to keep yeah. you on them for as long as yeah. you can. Yes, they yes. Built them not for you to leave, 
right? Yeah, I'm not so, going to leave TikTok once I'm there. Right. They don't want you to leave, right? Because no. the longer you spend on it, the more value per uh, per yeah. user, right? Um, and that's what people don't understand. And a lot of people try to uh, compare influencer marketing to digital marketing. And digital marketing is different because I'm attacking you. I'm paying the platform to attack you. So that you leaving in that scenario is different. And then I pixel you. And then a week later, when you make that purchase decision to buy a Dyson vacuum, mm -hmm. boom, I know where that came from. Yeah. Influencer marketing falls short in a number of those areas because of those blockades, right? So if, I, mm -hmm. if I'm a big brand and I post on a big influencer's Instagram feed, I am not converting technically anything because it's actually yeah. impossible to see. So what we've done um, is beyond Instagram swipe ups, Instagram bios, yeah. YouTube links, and the, the real tangible links, we've built that all into Coupon rates. codes. Right. Everything you would do for digital, we have it for influencer where applicable. Yeah. And then how we deal with the, the hard to attribute areas like the TikTok, like the yeah. Instagram yeah. feed, is we've developed attribution models based off of campaigns. So I'll give you an example. We've worked with like Match.com. We've worked with Anheuser-Busch. We've worked with like major brands who have allowed us to run attribution um, kind of tests. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll shut off digital. We'll shut off other channels. We'll run yeah. influencer for a period of time. And then we'll say, okay, that campaign for those two days got 8,000 clicks. Yep, and yep. those 8,000 clicks through our, like I showed you, our, our track channel converted to $5,000 in revenue. Yep, yep. But that day we did 20,000 in revenue, right? So where did the other, you know, 16 come from or 14 mm -hmm. or whatever, if I can do math properly. And that's how we started to build these attribution models. So now when we go into these scenarios, we're educated. The numbers are coming from yep. a smart place and we're able to value influencer property. But at the end of the day, um, the way I described it this morning is you have the bottom, which is TV, radio, yep. et cetera, right? They're down here, untrackable, yep. right? Like yep. a billboard, you'll never be able to track a zero. Yep. Then you have digital, which is hyper trackable. Influencer yep. is the perfect in between. Some of it's super trackable, some of it's like this one. And what we've done is just taken the best practices from both of these worlds and stuck them together. I feel like you also get the bonus in that middle, call it the middle of the sandwich, where the influencers create content with their accent, flavor, you know, kind of element to it. And, and you get content out. You get videos and photos out of the deal, which you, you get don't more, get with. You get more than that, man. Like you get the content's a big one. You don't get that on either of the other two because you actually have to make it right. Yeah. Um, but you get social growth which is yeah. something that a lot of brands are like, why isn't my social growing, right? And like mm -hmm. influencer is a catalyst for that as like a yeah. tertiary result, right? It's not yeah. like what you're paying for. It's just the result. Yeah. Um, for YouTube specifically, which is really cool, man, is if you have a, a really on point YouTube influencer strategy for a product, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking going out and spending, you know, $200,000 $200, on a big YouTuber. I'm saying Part of our millennial process decision, and when I say millennial, I'm not taking 16-year-olds. Yeah. Um, part of our process now, especially on what I call substantial purchases, so purchases that have you thinking about, like, should I buy that? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the major things that happens in that mental process is we go to YouTube now and we Google it. Uh, sorry, yeah. we YouTube it, right? So it's like if I'm buying a mic to do podcasts with you, I'm going to YouTube and I'm getting a review. Yeah. So sometimes – we'll run a YouTube influencer campaign. We could give a shit about the sales. What we want to do is know that for the next year, all my advertising is going to hit consumers when they make that YouTube search. And it's going to yeah. give the people the validity that they need in order to make that final decision. And why that's important is if you don't, if you're not proactive and do it yourself, what happens is guys like me and you who are just like random dudes, yeah. I don't know, one one afternoon will be like, let's review LaCroix. Yeah. And then like you're basically and then because of the tag and how specific it is, now I go and type in LaCroix review and you don't have to have big subs to come up. Yeah. And now you're risking it. Like, is it gonna oh, be yeah. negative? Is it gonna be positive? So there's so many cool um things that happen in, in that circle. And then it gets way deeper than that. Like we can we can download audiences from influencers and retarget against them in digital. We can like, there's so many cool things in the middle. There. These, uh, these glasses, funny enough mentioning, I, I didn't even think of it. Caitlin Bristow, who was, uh, on this, uh, TV show, uh, 
had a you know Instagram story. I saw the glasses. She had a coupon code to get either blue lens protect you from your screen. And then I wanted to finally, I was like, all right, I'm going to get some blue. My eyes are sore. I'm going to go buy some. And I went to go to that company and I was like, oh, I wonder if my her coupon code still works. It didn't work anymore, but I bought them anyways. But it was like, it was, she had planted that seed in my brain and she probably got no attribution from that at all. But she's the reason I went to this company. And in old school marketing rooms, and, and, you know, I'm very thankful to be a part of those discussions. Like as Viral Nation has gotten into the, the size we've gotten into, I now get to go to executive offsites. I sit at the table with the CMOs. And like, so what will happen is in a conversation with a high level CMO, they'll be like that Bristol deal sucked because she didn't drive enough sales through her link. And that's what I was addressing earlier is this, this attribution gap. Yeah. That re- and don't get me wrong, man, uh, and I'll level with you. I'm like the influencer guy. Like I'm a Rolodex of influencer, but listen, some influencers suck. Some of their engagement sucks. Some of them are fake as shit. Yeah. Not, um, you know, I'm not like a all loving influencer. Yeah. Every influencer is great. There's, I even, I even am in the process of writing a book, believe it or not, of, you know, there's influencers that you look at and there's influencers yep. you engage with, right? Yep. And those will have two very different results on a KPI, right? So if yeah. I'm some, you know, really good looking girl and blah, 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 and I, I post about, a, you know, some new toothbrush, no yep. one gives a shit about her opinion on the toothbrush. Mm-hmm. But if I'm a, you know, a, a student who's in dental school, who's yep. like really cool and like, yep. he's like this, like... You know what I'm saying? There needs to be alignment and there's really, there's a lot of ways to miss on influencers. So like, I don't want people to think that I think that influencers are almighty. You need to be yeah. very critical of, of your decision. And there's some great tools out there, which I'm sure you guys have that, that tell you the engagement levels, right? Like someone could have a million followers and, and someone else could as well, but they could have, one could have 2% engagement, the other 8%. Right. And, and again, like, um, you know, we're big enough now that this isn't a sales pitch. It's important with influencer marketing to work with agencies that have a lot of um, recognition and a lot of success and a lot of campaigns. And I'll tell you why. Those numbers can be deceiving. Um, Those engagements can be mundane or useless. Um, Mm -hmm. There's so many things that go into choosing the right influencer for a campaign that that I, I always tell people like there's if you have like, let's say for instance, someone with no experiences versus someone with a ton of experience run an influencer campaign, the difference in result is staggering. It's not like, Mm -hmm. Hey, I did a Facebook ad and you did a Facebook ad Mm -hmm. and we targeted the same people. My creative was different. It's very different than that. So yeah. So we use Influsoft, that partner to to reverse search, but we still use like human brain to figure out how, and then the other thing with influencer too that I think would be fun for your viewers to understand is influencers like everyone else in the world, there's some that are great to work with and there's yeah. some you're going to hate. Mm-hmm. And there's some that are lazy. There's some that are selfish. There's some that are entitled. There's some mm-hmm. that – so uh, sometimes too the decision we make on our side is, yeah, this girl or this guy has a little bit better engagement than this person. But we've worked with this person before and they are a, a joy to work with. They yeah. get – done on time they represent the brand well so like there's so many elements to influence or to consider you got to be super careful with it uh, even a good example birds papaya who's a canadian as well just her engagement is incredible like she's raw she's real and the engagement levels there are, are influential and, and the amount of shares she gets because um, her whole mo is i'm going to tell you like it is and when she does promote a brand it's like whoa she probably you know, critically thought about it. She processed it. And if she's endorsing it, 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 there must be something good behind it. Right. And that's where you get into, um, you know, again, like everything in the world, there's a black market, right? Um, everything, right. And with influencer, what you'll see is there's influencers out there who are really driven by money and not so much maintaining their audience. And that's what you're going to see posts like, you know, thir- three, three hour whitening gel strips and, you know, get this abs in 25 minutes or these butt lifts or, you know, really crummy advertisements. Those types of influencers, believe it or not, if we see those types of ads, we don't engage with them because we know their audience has been pounded to death with poo yeah. for this long, right? Yeah. So we get to influencers. I mean, so like, this is what I mean. Every layer, you, it's like an onion. Every layer is like a new way to cry. 
<laughs> and, and what do you think that just even in the last six years, you look at it like from, you know, the beginning of the mommy bloggers, right, who are predominantly kind of kind of forged this world to what we have now in the maturing, like people who are taking it as a career, who are taking it really seriously. There's contracts, there's representatives. Yeah. So what do you think happened in the last six years? Why do you think it's matured so much? Um, well, just just to clarify, too, like Viral Nation has two companies. Uh, yeah. We have Viral Nation Marketing. That's our big, big company. And then we have Viral Nation Talent. So they sit separately, but they represent talent or whatever. But I think the coolest answer to this question is I think influencer is penetrating the world in a really crazy way, even beyond the influencers we're talking about. So to give you an example, like you can't be a political candidate without being huge on social. So pol yeah, politics yeah. is now being consumed. You're not getting a gig, an acting gig in a big movie or a big TV show unless you've got big social clout. You know, social's becoming a commodity that's helping people get farther in places. Mm -hmm. and, and fortunately, that spills into some crummy areas like, you know, the girl at school with the most Instagram followers mm -hmm. is more popular and, you know, kids are judging each other off of this and et cetera. But I think that the influencer space is continuing to... Um, evolve and I'm kind of excited to see where it's going to go um, in the next few years but God knows I, I really don't know the extent of where it's going to go but I, I think that these creators are, are doing some amazing things and uh, you know I think that they're they're so important for brands they're, like mm. it's, it's crazy. So we've started to figure out you know using tools like Sprout Social and the listening tool and, and all these great tools you have like LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook um, but then all of a sudden comes along TikTok and, and people are now just like wrapping their heads around it. What, what are your, what's your advice to people that are trying to wrap their heads around TikTok and the influence of TikTokers? Yeah. So believe it or not, man, uh, TikTok, uh, TikTok used to be Musical.ly and uh, mm -hmm. Viral Nation launched Musical.ly. It was one of our first clients. So like we've been wow. around Musical.ly and TikTok since it started. So um, I do like a billion interviews on TikTok. It's just like the, the hottest thing. I think what's interesting about TikTok is it's a, it's a, and it's an entertainment channel. Mm -hmm. uh, the psychology of why you go there is very different than uh, why you go to Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. YouTube's generally more educational or long form, very different feeling when you're there. Uh, still a lot of desktop user, et cetera. You know, Instagram, you're checking on what your neighbor's doing, what your colleague, it's mm -hmm. just very different. So I think that um, TikTok is very much an entertainment platform yeah. where you're going to, yeah. you know, have a smile, have a laugh, share something with your friends, whatever, which obviously Instagram crosses with, whatever. Um, but I think, you know, similar to Vine, um, yeah. it's important that TikTok keeps their creators happy because the creators are what's making this universe yeah. what it is. Um, but I, I, have, I see a lot of uh, upside for that. Um, you know, the, the audience on TikTok isn't aligning with all the big brands yet just because it's, it is still young. I know 40% of it is over 25 now, and I think that's incredible. And we've done campaigns to help them do that. Uh, TikTok's a client of Viral Nation, so we help grow their platform. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I think they have a, a long outlook. I don't think it'll ever be a platform that's serious um, or evolves into something. I think what's best for TikTok is for them to stay in their lane. And from a marketing perspective, I always say with TikTok, align, align, align. So the closer you can get to the content that's on there and the closer you can get to doing what they're doing already from an influencer perspective, the better your chances of doing a good campaign. So you're not going to go to a TikTok influencer who does dances and get them to do an unboxing on TikTok. That'll that not good. You got to be careful um, how you align there. And then I always say for brands like and and uh, this is something cool I just know as an insider. TikTok operates very old school when it comes to how they monitor their platform. So they have a lot of people at TikTok who are watching, um, not in a weird way, but like they're they're watching who's who's new, who's you know who just signed up and and whatever. And brands like. Um, Golden State Warriors and some other guys, they, they've they just gone and started making content and then TikTok's promoting their stuff, right? Mm. So from a brand perspective, get on there, start making content. Yeah. TikTok will recognize it and they'll help you. Um, so I think TikTok's very good for certain brands organically and with influencers. As long as you can get your brand to fit that style of content, don't force it, right? Like I wouldn't do vacuum cleaners on TikTok. I wouldn't do like, you know, you got to figure out how to fit into what they're doing as opposed to on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. You can create ideas. Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts on LinkedIn? People are trying to figure out how the whole LinkedIn world works right now and, and LinkedIn Live and LinkedIn posting videos. What are your thoughts for people who want to become like a LinkedIn influencer? 
Oh God, I've been I've been preaching that for three years, man. Actually, uh, one of our VPs, um, we set out on a mission uh, together, and we supported him. And you know, it's all him. Like he 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 really invested in himself, and uh, he grew. I think he has close to thirty five thousand marketers follow him on there, and he makes constant wow. videos about updates on the industry, funny stuff, and that's generated a lot of business for Viral Nation and a lot of exposure for Viral Nation. Mm -hmm. Um, our entire business development team makes constant video content for you for LinkedIn. We have a full-time ad buyer here that does LinkedIn posts, uh, LinkedIn promotions, and LinkedIn paid mm -hmm. advertising. We've done live. We've scheduled live. We've even made a we've even made a, a music video for LinkedIn that aired on nice. LinkedIn. So like, yeah. we're very familiar. Here's the problem with LinkedIn: you have this kind of this like devil and an angel situation going on where these exec, you know, LinkedIn is a masterful tool for salespeople, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's the holy grail for a sales guy. Mm -hmm. Sales guys used to have to go hunt this stuff. Now they're just yeah. like here smiling in their display picture, right? Yeah. So you have these people, you know, especially these C-level people and like executives getting inundated with messages from guys like me, I want to do your marketing campaigns or, you know, people like, hey, I have this new cool software solution or whatever, right? Um, so it's LinkedIn from a from a marketing perspective is how do you break through that noise? So how we do that is we do value-based marketing. So what we try to do is instead of being salesy on LinkedIn, we try to create value for the person we're trying to get at. So like, mm -hmm. You know, how can we give someone advice or a tip or show them something that intrigues them? And hopefully then when we send that message, they're more receptive. So like That's awesome. LinkedIn is more, you got to just more coddle it. And LinkedIn's very expensive. So what I would say about LinkedIn is you need to have a very high user acquisition cost. You need to have good margins on your products and stuff because you can't go in there expecting to pay Facebook ad level for, for leads and stuff. But yeah, you need to really um, massage LinkedIn to work for you. But once you've done that, oh my God, man, I, I I think Viral Nation would be half the size if we didn't do our marketing on there. Wow, that's incredible. Joe, this, this man, has been jam-packed full of ideas, tips. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. If people want to hear more and get more insights from yourself, Viral Nation, where can they go to get more ideas? Anywhere, man. Uh, we're, we're, we're wherever. So viralnation.com obviously would, would direct you to like our team and uh, either our business development team or our talent team or whatever. You can go wherever in there. Um, or you can reach out to me jo uh, directly at joe at viralnation.com. I have the easiest email ever. Um, but yeah, uh, open to any advice or help I can give or whatever. This is my passion, this, this part of the business and, and et cetera. That's amazing. And then uh, LinkedIn, they can friend you there and connect with you there. Yeah. And then do you guys have an e-newsletter as well that you guys do? Uh, no, we don't have an e-newsletter, but our LinkedIn, if you follow like Viral Nation on LinkedIn itself, we post yeah. video content on there about okay. everything influencer, everything digital, everything experiential, like all the services we do. Uh, we have brands on there sometimes, like from bigger brands we work with and stuff. But yeah, content's everywhere. Sure, that's awesome. And lastly, um, any sort of like tips or resources of wh where you go for inspiration, kind of like books you can recommend or podcasts or kind of e-newsletters well, that you like? I'd love to. Um, my mentor and uh, one of my best friends on the planet is a guy named Bruce Poontip. Okay. Um, he's from Toronto, um, but he's a he's an international entrepreneurial success. Yeah. Um, he is he's probably was one of the most wonderful men I've ever met, met in my life. He's helped me a lot. Um, he has a book called Loop Tale. Um, okay. It's one of, uh, I think it was New York Times bestseller or Amazon bestseller. And it's about his journey of, you know, creating this. He owns the largest group travel company in the world. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. And uh, he's been obviously going through a lot through this, you know, coronavirus and everything that's going on. He just released another book. But he's an inspiration for anybody in business. Mm. Um, and anytime I get a chance to expose what he does to people, you know, it doesn't benefit me or him. But you know, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. And uh, other than that, man, that's that's uh, that's it. Other than my nine month old baby, but she doesn't talk yet. So. <laughs> yes. We'll make sure we put a link to the book uh, in the notes here on the show. Thanks again, Joe. This is no a problem. huge treat to have you uh, here join us today. Thanks for me. All right. Thanks everyone for joining us this week on Marketing Jam. And we'll see you next week on The Jam.